Hey guys, it's DR Drake 63 here. Outdoors. Without snow on the ground. So beautiful day. Figure why not uh, why not take a look at this new addition for me, but definitely uh, an oldie but a goodie. This is a Marlin 336. And this one is chambered in 35 Remington, not your typical 3030. We'll get into differences in those two cartridges in a little bit. But I thought you'd let, let you take a look at this one to start. This particular firearm has uh, the coveted JM stamped barrel, which indicates that this was uh, uh, produced prior to any involvement from Remington, in this case, well prior to any involvement from Remington. This is from 1968. As you can see, it's a pretty doggone good condition back when they used to blue these things. Um, but just taking a look at this, you see it's got a peep sight on it, which is a little bit different than what we might be used to seeing here nowadays with Skinner sights and whatnot, but this is called a Williams sight. I'm not sure if this particular one's made anymore, but if you see um, it clamps on to the top of the receiver there and uh, has uh, different apertures that can go on to this thing. And you can see right there that uh, it has the ability to adjust elevation and windage uh, along with this front sight, which does not have the hood. Um, but uh, this has what I consider to be some very nice looking wood. It's been taken care of, not shot a lot over the years. And uh, as usual, the dog's got something to say. You see this does have that micro groove barrel. This is a 336 RC, which stands for Remington Caliber or Remington Carbine. You can see its caliber is 35 Remington. New Haven, Connecticut. Now this one you can see here, this is a plug. You put these in after you drift out the buckhorn sights, which typically you will do to make room for a rear peep sight. Now, I can't say that I 100% like the aesthetics of this. I do like the looks of a Skinner sight better, but you know what? <laughs> I don't know why I need to mess with this. As I mentioned, it's got an aperture that you can take this out and put different sizes in. Last time I checked, they are still available um, that you can get these online. You can see here too that it has uh, a Marlin supplied. And that right there is just a, a hammer extension that you'd get typically with, uh, if you're gonna put a scope on it, they wanted to, whoever had this before, wanted to put one on right there. You can see it's just it's beautifully blued, not really any flaws. If anything, you can't tell by looking at it probably. The wood's a little bit dry, so I've got some uh, got some things I can do to that. But it's just in really good shape. Which is more than I can say for this corner of my deck. This is getting replaced this year. Beautiful firearm. Now, I've done a number of videos about lever actions. Uh, I think the first one I did was on the Marlin 336. Uh, that also was a JM stamped uh, older version. Uh, that was in 3030. This one is a, a 336 that is, uh, as we said, in the 35 Remington. Uh, in addition to that, we've, uh, we've seen the big loop lever from uh, Marlin, which is uh, a 4570 government as well as uh, the Uberti uh, 1873 uh, 
firearm that uh, shoots 38 or 357. So um, I'm no uh, I'm no newcomer to lever uh, lever actions by any stretch. Uh, I think they're great firearms. I think that they're every bit as uh, uh, pertinent and uh, uh, relevant, I should say, today as they were when they first came out for a lot of uses. Uh, hunting being the main one. And of course, you know, anytime you want to shoot targets, they're just absolutely fun. But bottom line is they were the original assault rifle back in the day. And uh, one of the main reasons that Custer got his butt kicked at Little Bighorn was because uh, they were using single shot rolling block Springfield uh, uh, firearms. And at that time, uh, the uh, Native Americans they were going up against had lever actions. And I think we, we know the story there. Um, but uh, uh, this particular one, you know, we're typically looking at cycling. And, you know, these are not cowboy guns. And what I mean by that is these are not known to be the fastest cycling for the guys that really want to pop off the uh, pop off the rounds to a second or two per second or more or something like that. Uh, but... What these are are extremely reliable. They're going to feed forever. Like I said, this is from 1968, and uh, it probably functions better than one out of the box today. Um, we could get into a long, drawn-out conversation about the difference between the old Marlins and the new Marlins, and most of the stuff that you'll notice, at least in my opinion, is going to be stuff like if you look at the fit of the stock against uh, against the receiver and things of that nature. They just did a better job back then. Well, this isn't really that hard to figure out. Hell, they don't even offer shop class in most high schools anymore. So uh, you really don't have a, a hands-on capable workforce that you used to back in 1968 when this was made. I think it's kind of sad. I'd like to see that change in our country, but that's that's a whole different conversation. The Marlin uh, lever action rifle is a great design uh, in terms of shooting, so forth and so on. You know, you've seen uh, you've seen the Henry Big Boy on this channel. Higher end Henry's Henry kind of runs the gamut. Uh, the 22 that I've shown, uh, the 22 carbine from Henry, awesome rifle, phenomenal uh, phenomenal rifle. So I'm not here to really get into this guy's better than that guy or any of that kind of thing. But uh, I will tell you, if you can get your hands on a jam stamped Marlin, uh, you're probably not going to be disappointed. Now, the biggest issue I'm going to have with this one is, you know, ammo availability. Now, you know, over the Internet, yeah, you can always get it. Uh, the 35 Remington is going to cost more than uh, the 3030 ammunition. Uh, it's not going to be available at nearly as many places. I can only think of a couple places off the top of my head, and I live in a big city where I could go get a box of that stuff right now. So there is that to consider. Uh, but when when you start talking about uh, uh, some of these firearms with cartridges that are a little bit more obscure, that aren't in as big a use, best idea is to, to stock up a little bit. And uh, don't plan on shooting those a bunch. You know, if I want to go out and shoot three, 400 rounds with a lever action in a day, I'm going to use a 22 anyway, that's for sure. The 35 Remington was originally developed for this bad boy right here. This is the Remington Model 8, which is a turn-of-the-century-ish autoloader that Remington brought out. It was a sporting rifle, a hunting rifle. Uh, didn't see military use or anything like that, but... The real uh, advantage of a 35 Remington versus a 3030 is pretty negligible. I guess it's a bigger, heavier bullet, might have a little bit more uh, of, a, of a wound cavity kind of thing, blows a bigger hole. But, uh, you know, 200 grains, a little bit slower than the 160 to 170 you see with the 3030s. They both have about 1,700 to 1,900 foot-pounds, so... Um, no huge advantage one versus the other. Um, here you see the 35 Remington. There's so much more 3030 available on the market. So if there is an advantage, it would probably be to the 3030 for that reason. But um, not going to shoot this enough to where it's really going to make that big a difference. Uh, but this is DR Drake 63. I appreciate you watching. Uh, this is, again, the Marlin 336 RC in 35 Remington. Uh, a beautiful example 
uh, of American craftsmanship. And uh, I've been doing a little bit lately here with some uh, older school uh, firearms, getting them out of the safe, some stuff that we've recently picked up, you name it. And uh, I'd like to share that with you. Hope that we can still be a country that can make these kind of firearms and not everything goes the way of uh, having to be tactical and black rifle all the time, which you know I enjoy and you know that I'm very involved with if you watch this channel. But uh, I like the diversity and uh, I hope we can keep having that in this great nation. This is DR Drake 63. I want to thank you for watching and have a great day.